Welcome to Sibspot. Today's Reddit stories are from Petty Revenge. Story 1 is by PPJR16. Okay then, block my driveway. I live next to a school and I've had parents back up into my driveway waiting for their children. If I'm not going anywhere, I don't mind. No harm, no foul. One day I come home to find a woman in my driveway. I get out of my car and ask her to please pull out for a second so I could pull in and then you can go back where you were. She said, I will only be a few minutes. I said, ma'am, I live here and I'd like to get into my garage. Because it's a narrow street and parents are now parked on both sides, the street access is now narrow and only one car can get by at a time. I told her that I cannot wait here a few minutes because I'm blocking traffic. Well, I'll be moving in a bit. I said, okay, no you won't be. I then parked perpendicular to her vehicle, blocking my own driveway and her vehicle. As I walked by, I told her I really have to use the bathroom and I have stomach cramps. You are welcome to call the police if you like, I'll be out in a bit. The look on her face after she realized what was happening was priceless. A few minutes later, I could hear her honking. A few more minutes and I hear her honking and my doorbell ringing. Only because I saw it was a child ringing my doorbell, I answered. I'll be out in a minute. I'm washing my hands. I could hear the little boy screaming to his mother, I assume. He says he's washing his hands. By the time I came out, a few more minutes later, all the vehicles and students were gone. I very slowly walked past her car, avoiding eye contact, and got into my car. I adjusted the mirror, moved the car seat forward, then back slowly started the car and moved my car forward slowly. All I heard was the tires screeching and the car horn honking as she left. Her windows were rolled up so I can only assume the little boy got an earful of nice words as she was leaving. My neighbors were wondering what was going on with all the honking. When I explained, they said, oh yeah, that's what we kind of figured. How crazy a person do you have to be to be parked in someone's driveway and be like, Oh, you want to park? I'll just be a few more minutes. If you could just wait, my kid's coming out soon. Main character syndrome is a plague. There's a lot of places in the States where the parking isn't too congested. So in that case, they could have parked a little bit down the street just for a little while and then backed into their driveway later. But it is their driveway. If they wanted to call the police on you, they could have. She should immediately move. There's also so many places in the States, and it sounds like this is one of them, where parking is so bad that you can't go anywhere else. There's nowhere else to go and wait for somebody who's entitled and waiting for their child to come out. Our next story is by Drenask. Damage my fence, will you? Not my story, but a neighbor's. We live in a cul-de-sac with a 90-degree bend third of the way in. At that point were the gates to a primary school with their grounds on the opposite side of the road to all the houses. I learned to leave for work before 8 and not to try to return home at the end of the school, between 2.45 and 3.30. It was always a mess, barely any room for cars to pass even if none were parked in the pavement or not. His particular problem was a garden fence that ran along his side boundary adjacent to a meter or three foot path. The last post was at the point where path went from along his property to the front of it. Over a year. Parents reversed into this post, mounting the pavement to do so and with enough speed to break or dislodge the 100mm post. He was pissed and it was costing him to replace the post and fence while the guilty parents just laughed. During the summer break, he replaced the post with an iron beam and painted it brown. First driver to reverse into it did a good job on their car and knocked on his door, demanding compensation, as did the next few. He just laughed, pointing out they were breaking the law by mounting the pavement and four-inch curb at speed before shutting the door on them. I've heard stories like this before. I'm hoping it's not just a repost. It's definitely worded differently than I remember, but there's definitely been stories about poles that were made of wood and cars used to run into them and the guy found a way to make an iron pole or put cement around the bottom of it so that it doesn't move. So, it's very possible this is one of those reposted stories, but I'm not sure. Down in the comments by Ack1308, I did security for 19 years. At one point, I was literally directing traffic at pickup and drop-off times at a local primary school. One of my jobs was to make sure nobody parked in the three pickup or drop-off spaces, got out and walked. 
I was there because this had become problematic. There were a few terse words exchanged between me and a few parents before they got the message. A lot more parents were giving me the thumbs up out of the window as they dropped off their kids and drove away. By the end of my time there, I had most of them trained pretty well. When I saw three cars pull up simultaneously, three doors open, three kids got out, three doors closed, and three cars drove off again in under 30 seconds, seriously, it couldn't have been more if I choreographed it, I knew I was on a winner. And underneath that by so, so blue. My daughter's old school had a similar routine. A small, private Catholic school. They would set up cones to direct traffic to one side of the lot or playground, splitting upper grade drop-off from the lower grade. A teacher would make the car wait until all four cars ahead had exited. Older kids, super proud of this responsibility, would open the car door for the little kids, shut it after they were safely away. Same with pickup, most of the time it was seamless. That school was awful for my kiddo in other regards, but their drop-off system was on point. She never got to use the big kid drop-off before we pulled her out. Small towns with limited road space, traffic during, traffic during the end of school is awful. We used to have all the younger grades get uh, bussed up to the high school and they would sit in the auditorium because the high school had a much better infrastructure layout with wider lanes and more lanes. In the part of the school district that was for the younger kids, they didn't even have a bus lane. They just had the road. It was right on Main Street, and there was nowhere for the buses to park. So they split up the congestion on the road by busing all the kids to the high school and then sending all the buses from the high school all over town. It's such a small town, though, that uh, it's only a matter of time before even that is a traffic problem. And the funny thing is, people were voting on completely redoing the entire school district on the edge of town to get really good infrastructure set up around it, and people voted it down. And according to the breakdown that somebody did that analyzed how much it would have cost taxpayers, it would have been a 30 cent increase in their taxes per month. 30 cents total on their taxes per month. And they said no to it because they just, nobody likes taxes. Nobody likes taxes, but there's definitely sometimes when it's needed. Our next story is by Complex Most 3656. Block the road? How about find your key? I was driving through my neighborhood. It was developed in the 1940s and has narrow streets and a lot of on-street parking, and I encounter a delivery truck with its lift gate extended, parked crooked across the road, blocking the flow of traffic. The way the truck was positioned, if the driver had pulled forward another three feet, they could have allowed for the passage of traffic. As I pull up, I see two delivery men using a dolly to move a refrigerator into a house. I signal to them and ask if they can pull forward a couple of feet to allow me and others to pass. The driver signals back to me with the one finger salute and continues to move the fridge into the house. I wait until they've made it inside and the storm door closes. I jump into the cab, the truck had been left running, and pull the truck forward, the few feet necessary. As I exit, I turn off the truck, remove the key, single key, tiny paper fob, and throw the key into the across-the-street neighbor's lot a few houses down with a terribly unkempt yard. As I'm pulling away, the delivery guy comes back out of the house. I give them my best princess die wave, followed by my own one-finger salute, and kept on driving. I don't think that I'd know how to pull a delivery truck ahead. They don't drive the same way. Maybe some of the smaller trucks are just automatic vehicles, like some of the ones that I've driven. I always found it a little strange that... Some of the bigger vehicles like buses and trucks, they don't have an indicator that tells you where the stick shift is at the time. Like in my old standard vehicle, there was a path. It would go, you know, first gear, second gear. There was reverse all the way over to the right or something like that. It's been years since I owned it, but I guess with a big truck or bus, you just get used to where the position is. Like if you're a trombone player, you know where the position is for certain notes and stuff. I guess it just comes with practice muscle memory or something. But I know some of them probably have an indicator on the dashboard too that I generally can't see. Our next story is by Aggravating Layer 49 Boss won't let me park on public space. Neither can you. Man, these are all about driving and parking. This happened many years ago. I'm an IT contractor living in England. I got a job working next to the Welsh Assembly in Wales. Shockingly, typically I'd travel on bicycle or train since there really wasn't a need for a car in Cardiff. 
One week I needed my car there for something, so I arrive early Monday morning. Between the Welsh Assembly and our building was a triangle of land that belonged to the Welsh Assembly, but they'd not included it inside their wall, so it was just this triangle of unmaintained mud or grass, big enough for one car parallel to the wall or two cars perpendicular. I arrived, parked with enough space for another car. There was usually one parked there. Midway through the day, I get called over by my boss who asked if I parked there. He says that his boss is pissed because I'm parked there. I argue over it being public land, etc. I'm told that this boss gets the say on my contract and doesn't need a reason to end my contract. Fine, I'll move my car. Within 30 minutes of moving my car, boss's boss has turned his around so nobody else can park there. This annoys me. The following Sunday, I visit the local car hire company and find out that because of the miracle of the British train network, it costs me about an extra 20 euros to hire a car for the week. Off to Cardiff I go. Car gets parked there from 6am Monday all the way through 6pm Friday. Boss asks if it's mine. Of course not. You've seen what I drive. I don't know nothing. This goes on for the next four months of my contract. I guess you really can't contest that when your boss's boss is being a jerk. It may be public land, you could contact the police if you wanted to, but do you really want to sour your relationship with this jerk? (laughs) I think in the long run, he is not going to treat you well. Down in the comments by Comic Sans 222, you'd go so far as to spend money to piss someone else off? Hats off to your pettiness, my good sir. That's true, they did say they're going to spend an extra 20 euros a month. Just so that they can park their car, which looks different than the first one they drove out there. That's a level of dedication to the petty cause that I will never achieve. Our stories for today have come to a close. Until we meet again, have an ascended day.